The following program is sponsored by CBN. He was a new age guru. I believe God was rewarding me. Who was spooked by an out of body experience. This stuff is more powerful than I was. Then a family of four is plunged into a watery grave. It was very much like I was already dead. See their supernatural rescue. Almost felt like he was an angel. On today's 700 Club. You know, for a living miracle. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. For today's top stories, let's go over to the CBN News Desk. Gordon, there are hopes the summit between North Korea and the U.S. could still happen. After canceling last week, President Trump says the two countries and South Korea are back at the negotiating table. CBN's Jenna Browder brings us the story now from Washington. Talks are underway to make the summit between the United States and North Korea a reality. The State Department confirming a U.S. delegation is on the ground meeting with North Korean officials. President Trump also tweeting, I truly believe North Korea has brilliant potential and will be a great economic and financial nation one day. Kim Jong-un agrees with me on this. It will happen. This coming after the leaders of North and South Korea exchanged handshakes and hugs over the weekend and at the White House. We're looking at June 12th in Singapore. That hasn't changed. Just last week, Trump canceled the summit after North Korea threatened a nuclear showdown. But North Korea also made some goodwill gestures, setting off explosions they say destroyed their nuclear testing facility. Still, Senator Marco Rubio and others aren't convinced. It's all a show. It's a show. I remain convinced that he does not want to denuclearize. In fact, he will not denuclearize. Denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula is President Trump's goal if the June 12th meeting takes place. Of course, that's a big if, as a lot could happen between now and then. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. Tropical Storm Alberto is dampening Memorial Day plans along the Gulf Coast. It's expected to make landfall by mid-afternoon Monday. Forecasters fear heavy rain over parts of Florida and southeastern United States will cause flash floods. Beaches and campgrounds are closed across the Gulf. Governors in three states declared states of emergency Saturday. President Trump's legal team wants to know more about the FBI informant who contacted his campaign aides and passed along information to the Justice Department. And they say the president should not talk to special counsel Robert Mueller until they get it. On Fox News Sunday, attorney Rudy Gianni said the administration needs to see the classified information on the informant that justice officials shared with members of Congress last week. The reality is uh, we are not going to sit him down if this is a trap for perjury. And until we're convinced of that. And if they don't show us these documents, well, we, we just going to have to say no. Congressional Democrats who have seen the information claim there is no evidence of a spy in the Trump campaign. Vice President Mike Pence paid a surprise visit to a gathering of pastors in Washington Friday night. He emphasized how the Trump administration has championed causes important to the evangelical community and implored them to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. I truly do believe that other than the service of those who wear the uniform of the United States, especially our cherished fallen, that the ministries that you lead, the prayers that you pray, are of the greatest consequence in the life of the nation. And so I encourage you to keep it up. Keep preaching the good news. Keep preaching in season and out of season, as the Bible says. The vice president even shared his personal testimony how 40 years ago this spring he gave his life to Christ at a Christian music conference. Former President George Herbert Walker Bush is in the hospital being treated for low blood pressure and fatigue. A spokesperson for Mr. Bush says he is awake, alert and comfortable, but he's expected to remain at the hospital in southern Maine for several days. The 93 year old had been vacationing at his summer home in Kennebunkport and recently visited a local VFW for a pancake breakfast. His wife of 73 years, Barbara Bush, died last month. In July 1945, the USS Indianapolis was sailing in the South Pacific, headed to the Philippines, but the ship never made it. Edgar Harrell was on that ship. He picks up the story of what happened as the Indianapolis was given orders to sail alone through dangerous waters. Captain McVeigh asked for an escort, and uh, they tell him, you don't need an escort. 
Uh, well, may I say, uh, they were not telling the truth. They could have said, you need an escort. Why? Because four days before, we lost a destroyer of the USS Underhill. We lost 129 boys. And we were to go through that very area. Why Navy leaders made that decision, Harrell says, remains a mystery. And that brings us to July 30th, 1945. A Japanese submarine spots the Indianapolis in the Philippine Sea and fires a spread of torpedoes. Two hit their mark, and in less than 15 minutes, the ship goes down. Around 900 of the nearly 1,200 man crew who survived the initial attack find themselves oil soaked, many with injuries, clinging to KPOC life jackets in the shark infested waters. Harold, who was 20 at the time, says he began to think of scriptures. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Seemingly that came to mind, no audible voice, but I knew that the Lord was speaking to me. Lord, you're speaking to my heart. Uh, I'm going to make it. Well, I didn't know I'm going to be out there four and a half days. Four and a half days of unbelievable horror. No food, no water, and yet surrounded by water in all directions, along with sharks. The brutal conditions took their toll. The number of sailors and Marines dwindled down to a little more than 300. Finally, a plane flew over the area low to the water. A miracle because the pilot, Lieutenant Wilbur Gwynn, wasn't looking for the survivors. He did not even know they were missing. No one did. Lieutenant Gwynn goes aft, he opens the bomb bay door, and in just a flash, he looks down at the ocean below, and what he saw was an oil slick. He radios for help, and eventually 317 crew members of the USS Indianapolis are pulled from the water. Harold spent months in hospitals recovering. After everything Harold went through, it's easy to see why he's a decorated Marine. He was even awarded the Purple Heart. Here is the letter dated August 13th, 1945. The Purple Heart is awarded by the medical officer in command to Edgar Alvin Harrell for wounds received in action against an enemy of the United States on July 30th, 1945. Mark Martin, CBN News, Clarksville, Tennessee. And there is much more to his amazing story of survival, including how God sent and uh, others a miraculous provision of food and water. See the full story at our website, cbnnews.com. Gordon and Terry are back with much more of today's 700 Club. That's coming up right after this. These days, couples are spending nearly twice as much as they did on weddings 10 years ago. And it's a trend some money experts and even pastors find troubling. Heather Sells breaks down the reasons why an expensive wedding may not be the best way to start a marriage. For most brides, it starts with this. Thousands of pictures and ideas to help plan the perfect wedding. It's definitely a lot of pressure. Corey Bateman got married last summer and says she was well aware of the challenge in meeting expectations set by social media. I think weddings are just a much bigger deal than they ever used to be. It's not as much as, oh, it's two people getting married, it's what kind of party are you going to throw? And Bateman isn't alone in her feelings. More than one third of couples feel pressure from the media to have that perfect wedding. It may be why the average bride and groom spend $28,000 compared to just $16,000 10 years ago. Or why they delay walking down the aisle. I am seeing engagements being greatly prolonged. I'm seeing people searching for the perfect venue, for the perfect time of year, for the perfect colors. Pastor Benjamin Verbacek has written about the pressures couples face to create what he calls the Pinterest dream wedding. It's a theme that other pastors have picked up on as well. The goal, help Christian couples refocus and think about the ultimate purpose of their wedding and marriage. So culturally, I think right now we're at a place where um, our identity is not so much looking um, upward to God and who He says we are in the gospel, the good news that we're, we're His sons and daughters uh, in Christ, but, but rather who we posture ourselves as in social media. And research helps back up the idea of a frugal wedding. Economists have found couples going the $20,000 or more route 
divorce more than those who spend less than 10000 If you want to go big, social scientists recommend going with more family and friends, not necessarily more money. They believe it can increase your chance of a happy marriage. Sociologist Brad Wilcox calls it the big fat Greek wedding factor. So having your wedding, you know, in you know, a relatively cheap venue, maybe a church hall, for instance, or something else, but with a lot of your friends and family members there seems to be the formula uh, when it comes to the ceremony itself for greater marital quality. Nikki Crystal and her fiance followed this so-called formula without knowing it existed. I am one of five. My mom is one of six. Most of my family lives close by, and so I grew up with just a lot of people around, and I, can't, I couldn't imagine having something small. Crystal, however, also faced a tight budget. My parents helped a lot, and they helped where they could, uh, but I also didn't want to be in debt after I got married. So the couple cut corners. They picked a cheap venue, hired a photographer for just half a day, and bought wholesale flowers. That kind of thrifty thinking also inspired Casey Capra, who says her mom taught her about stewardship. Together, they made table centerpieces and other decorations. There was a lot of satisfaction in looking back at things you had created and done and known that you hadn't even spent a lot of money on it. For their large wedding, Corey Bateman and her fiance used their network of friends and family to help keep costs down while creating memories. Thanks to volunteers, they didn't have to hire musicians, a florist, or a wedding planner. Even after the whole day, I had people say to me, we really loved how your wedding was just so family oriented. I was like, well, what do you mean by that? I'm like, well, we just, you know, everyone was involved. It just seemed like there were a lot of people that care about you guys that helped and that um, were having, you know, just a great time and wanted to be a part. That community support, says Wilcox, can extend beyond the wedding day and help the couple weather the seasons of life. In the meantime, Pastor Benjamin is committed to help steer couples away from the Pinterest perfect event. I think they're relieved to have someone telling them, hey, don't, you don't have to make it about these things. You don't, the value of your wedding is not on how much you spent on it or how many people you know, post on Instagram at, during the reception. The value is, is that you love each other, that God loves you, and it was a, a Christian wedding. Heather Sells, CBN News. Well, I think Pinterest and social media put a lot of pressure on people in many, many yes, ways. I, I feel very sorry for men who are trying to figure out the most creative way to propose to a woman ever designed on the face of the <laughs> it earth. It has to go viral on YouTube or it won't work. Yeah, uh, yeah it's crazy. You know, it's, it's, uh, I, I do have to just underline if if a wedding is costing as much as a brand new car, uh, I'd really please rethink it. Uh, or take the car. Yeah, take the car <laughs> and and let's bring back elopement. I mean, that's you know what what are we thinking about? Yeah. I mean, it's it's such an a, ephemeral thing, and you know you if you're going into debt to do it, uh, absolutely don't do that. Uh, and if you're forcing your parents to go into debt, don't do that. You know, uh, I think one of the other things is it's it's hard sometimes to really be present at the wedding and appreciate the significance of the moment when you're exhausted, stressed out, you've overspent, and you, you just can't be present. Well, most weddings are whirlwinds, on. and Absolutely. in the rehearsal, you know, did you even get a chance to eat any of the food? Yeah. And, um, the wedding. <laughs> and at the wedding reception, yeah. did you get any, yeah. you know, and and so it's just this blur, blur and, mm -hmm. and really, yeah. do you need to mortgage your future to do that? Yeah. Anyway, hello, buy the car. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, coming up, as a new age blogger, he had hundreds of thousands of followers. I believe God was rewarding me with helping wake people up into a higher state of consciousness. It gave me a sense of power, a sense of purpose, and a sense of meaning and value, perhaps. So why did he suddenly shut down his lucrative website? You'll find out after this. At just 22 years old, Steve Bancars ran the second largest New Age website in the world. His mission was to reach a higher state of consciousness 
and to enlighten his mass of followers on social media. His website also generated tens of thousands of dollars in ad sales each month and provided Steve with a lavish lifestyle until suddenly one day he abandoned it all. I believed that I was God and that we could all become Christ too if only we realized this inherent connection we have to, to God. At 19 years old, New Age blogger Steve Bancars was a spiritual guru to hundreds of thousands of followers. For Steve, it had spiritual and financial benefits. I was getting 200,000 to 300,000 views on it a day, and the income to me was an affirmation from God. I believe God was rewarding me with helping wake people up into a higher state of consciousness. It gave me a sense of power a sense of purpose and a sense of meaning and value, perhaps. Steve grew up in a Christian home, but as a teenager, developed a fascination for aliens, the paranormal, and psychic phenomenon. That led him to question his parents' Christian beliefs and eventually led to a full-blown obsession with New Age theology. The first thing that really got me doubting the biblical worldview was uh, ufology. All of these UFO sightings, um, evidence from the ancient world that we might have been visited, and there was enough evidence to make me consider that maybe the universe is filled with intelligent biological life that was perhaps naturally evolved. If you piece together the alleged evidence for reincarnation and the alleged evidence for, um, you know, ancient astronaut theory, you get um, you get New Age theology. Jesus remained part of Steve's worldview. I didn't really reject him, but I didn't accept him for who he truly was. I created an idol out of Jesus to suit my own preferences, to suit myself, and to suit my sin. This Jesus was politically correct. He was a universalist. I wanted to be my own guide, and I didn't want to have to play by somebody else's rules. As Steve began blogging about New Age practices and supernatural phenomena, he came to enjoy his prominence and the money and vices that came with it. But it was never enough. I was a lust addict for 10 years or so. I was a really broken person. I didn't realize how broken that I, I truly was, but I was depraved. I was miserable. I had depression and anxiety that I was suppressing. I had all of this quote unquote spiritual knowledge all of this information, and it wasn't bearing any real fruit in my life. I felt like something was missing. I felt a little bit dead inside. Steve had a disturbing dream. When I opened my eyes, I was hovering four feet over my bed and realized that I was out of my body, and I started having a panic attack, and a being appeared in front of me, and this being had red skin with black markings on his face. It just scared me because I realized that I wasn't in control, that this stuff is more powerful than I was, that these forces were real, and that they didn't care for my well-being. They didn't need my permission. I was in their playground. Shaken by the experience, he began investigating the claims of the Bible and Jesus more closely. I would sleep with the Bible under my pillow because I knew there was something there that was authoritative, that was true, and that was secure, and that had power over anything that I was scared of. In his search for answers, Steve was drawn to stories in books and online of people who had encounters with Christ. I would watch another near-death experience where someone would go to hell. Jesus would rescue them out of hell, and they'd come back, and the fruit of their lives, they would be totally transformed, and I'd feel moved and touched. And I'd think to myself, okay, there's something real to Jesus the Jesus of the Bible. Steve finally accepted one of his mother's many invitations to go with her to church. At the end of the service, he prayed and asked Jesus into his life, but it was more of a mental exercise than an act of faith. I just decided in my head intellectually that I was going to soften up to him, but I still held all the same New Age beliefs. I still believed in everything that I believed in my sin life. I wanted a little bit more of him, but I guess I still didn't want all of him. After a few days, Steve realized he couldn't ignore the truth any longer. I reached a point in my life where the brokenness was weighing on me so much that I, I needed to stop playing games with my life. I needed to stop playing games with God and stop playing games with Jesus. 
and I just decided to go outside and to just fall on my face before Jesus and just weep. I was just weeping like a baby. I was submitting. I was repenting. I was tired. I was sorry. I was broken and I couldn't do this alone anymore. And I was crying out for, for him. I wanted him. In that moment, Steve had an experience with Christ of his own. I could feel that he was Lord over me and he was Lord over all creation. I could feel that he was concerned for me, but I could feel that he was king. I knew that he was king over creation, that the whole universe was under his feet and the wind was just totally infused with his presence. And the thing that stuck out for me that made me realize that I was dealing with, with God was how the wind and the trees, this, the sounds outside the birds, the crickets, they sounded like they were glorifying him. Like he was, he was there with me and they were acknowledging that somehow, like. Cre creation recognized him. Steve burned all of his New Age books and made a public statement to his online followers. I told people within a few days of that experience, I'm sorry for misleading all of you astray. This stuff is not of God. They're tools of demons to deceive us and lead us away from Jesus. And Jesus is the Son of God, and he's exactly who he claimed to be. Steve endured waves of ridicule and personal attacks from the online community, but that hasn't stopped him from trying to teach those who persecuted him. His website, reasonsforjesus.com, provides evidence and sound reasoning that prove the claims of the Bible and the only path to truth, forgiveness, and joy in life come through Jesus Christ. He delivered me from the stronghold of New Ageism and of occult philosophy. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. I feel more whole than I've ever been in my life. If there's hope for me, there's hope for anybody. I was the most lost person that I knew, and the Lord drew me to himself and had mercy on me. We come to the Lord. He forgives us. He gives us his spirit, and he wants to help us heal and restore us and walk us through these traumas and these pains, and he wants to accept us and welcome us as a son into relationship with him, not into dry religious rule keeping, but into a supernatural intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and his presence. And he, he absolutely wants the same for you. All you have to do is exactly what Stephen did. Cry out to him, ask him, to show you that he's real. Now, Stephen, for a long time, went down a wrong path, uh, and it started very innocently. But then at the end of it, you heard him. I, I was lost. I was empty inside. I was consumed by things that, that I, I couldn't control anymore. And then he had some profound spiritual experiences. Uh, I think all people everywhere have spiritual experiences. And it makes you wonder, what, what is my worldview? What, what, how do I explain these things? And sometimes we, we just sort of dismiss them. But for Stephen, it was, I, I need God. There are things out there in the spirit world who are malevolent, that don't have my best interest at heart. And when he discovered that, he discovered his need for a savior. Now maybe you're like Stephen, maybe you've had those experiences. Maybe you, you've just gone your own way intellectually and said, well, I'm, I want to follow into some other sort of tradition or some other worldview. In today's world, there are lots of them. But the truth, the truth, and Jesus said it, I am the way, the truth, and the life the truth and the way to the Father is through Him. And that way is open to you if you ask for it. And when you ask for it, you will have an encounter 
that will change your life, where God will manifest himself to you and show you, very tangibly show you, that he's real. Here's the Bible verse for you. When you seek me with all of your heart, then you will find me. If you want to do that, that's what Stephen did. He sought with all of his heart. It wasn't just intellectual assent. It wasn't just, well, I agree with the claims of the Bible. It wasn't some sort of social thing where I'm going to go to the front of the church and shake the pastor's hand. With his whole heart, he said, God, I need you. I'm tired of the way I'm living. I'm tired of the things that control me. I need you. And in that, he got a profound revelation that all creation sings. All creation praises the Lord. Even the rocks will cry out if we do not. Now, if you want this experience, here's the prayer for you. Jesus, if you're real, could you show me? If you really are the Messiah, if you really are my Savior, could you show me? Could you show up for me? And if you pray that with all of your heart, he will answer. So if you'd like to do that, just bow your head with me. Just take a moment right now. Don't change the channel. Don't wait another day. Let's do this right now. Bow your head, close your eyes, and let's pray. Jesus. That's right. Say his name and say it out loud. Jesus. I come to you. I see what you have done for other people. I hear the words of their testimony. And Jesus, I want that. I want to experience you. I want to know that you're real. So Jesus, hear my prayer. I seek you right now with all of my heart. I want to know and to understand that you're there. And Jesus, forgive me of the things that I've done wrong, the times that I've pursued my own way, my own desires, deliver me from that. Set me free and give me the assurance that you will never leave me, you will never forsake me. Hear my prayer, for I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, for those who just prayed, I ask right now that you would fill them to overflowing. I bind anything that's hindering their thoughts, their spirits, anything that is attached to them. I break it off of them now and ask for a baptism in your love, in your presence. Breathe on them. And I ask it all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to make a phone call. 1-800-700-7000 is the number. All you have to do is say, I prayed with that guy on TV. When you call, I've got something for you. It's absolutely free. It's called A New Day. And in there's a teaching on how do you live the Christian life. And as a Christian, what do you do now? You've prayed. Uh, now what do you do? Uh, and it's all free. Phone call is free. And if you've got any questions about angels and demons and those kinds of things, we've got plenty of pamphlets for you where uh, we want to explain these things, these experiences from a biblical perspective. And it's yours absolutely free. All you have to do is call us. We'll send it to you as a PDF file. If you don't have access to a computer, we'd be glad to mail it to you. All you have to do is call us. 1-800-700-7000. Terry, over to you. Well, coming up later, terror on the water for a family of four. The boat just smashed into the concrete wall and just dragged down the side of it. It was a horrifying feeling, like frozen panic. Watch how all four family members survived with the help of a mysterious stranger.
And welcome back to the 700 Club. Voters in Ireland repealed a pro-life constitutional amendment protecting pregnant women and their children. About two-thirds of those who cast a ballot voted to do away with the amendment, which banned abortions in most cases. Pro-lifers fear the repeal could open the door to abortion on demand in the heavily Roman Catholic country. Orphan's Promise is providing love and care to children with special needs in Vietnam, working with a local group to give the gift of education through the New Beginning School for the Deaf. There, children who have never been able to attend school before learn to read, use sign language, and study the Bible. Orphan's Promise also supports two centers that provide physical therapy to local children. To find out more about how you can help Orphans Promise, visit orphanspromise.org. Gordon and Terry are back with more of the 700 Club. It's coming up right after this. When the recession hit in 2008, Ken Young lost his job and his home. At one point, he was living in a friend's trailer with just 50 cents to his name. That's when Ken learned the secret to finding good work in a bad economy. Ken Young takes pride in his work and it shows. People call constantly needing his expertise, but it wasn't long ago the jobs had dried up and he was homeless. What bothered me was I was always able, from the time I left school till then, able to provide for myself. It was frightening. It started in 2008. The economy had taken a downturn and Ken's phone stopped ringing. He also got divorced. He quickly went through what little savings he had and eventually lost his home. I was worried. I go, what's next? What am I gonna do? In exchange for work, a friend let Ken spend the winter in a trailer he wasn't using. Any money he made on other jobs went to a storage shed for his tools and to pay his cell phone, the essentials of his trade. He lived on food stamps. It felt like everything was taken away from me. Then his cell phone was shut off. No phone, no work. My mindset was turn to God. That was my mindset. And at that point, every chance I got, I was down on my knees praying. Uh, get me out of this, God. Ken was down to his last two quarters. He used one of them to call another friend. And he says, I was just thinking about you. You need to come over to my house right now. There, Ken started watching the 700 Club and learned about God's principles of giving. Now with internet access, he advertised on Craigslist. If you give, it'll always be given back to you. I just never had faith enough to do it or believe it until I saw Pat and then I've seen the testimonies on the show. I think that's what really brought it into my mind a lot more. So he made a pledge to CBN. Then practically overnight the referrals started pouring in. Soon he was back on his feet in his own place and it's been that way ever since. Given that 10% or more every month. Um, it just, it comes back to you. I don't, it just comes back to you. And my business, I'm, I'm booked. And I keep getting calls. It just keeps coming in. In fact, he's in such high demand, he has to turn down work. I've had people go, well, how come you're doing so well right now? I said, well, God's blessing me because I'm blessing him. Interesting, isn't it? He says, I just never trusted enough to actually try doing what God suggested. It's not just a suggestion. God actually tells us to prove him in this, that if we trust him with our finances, if we give 10%, we keep 90, he gets 10, that he will bless us. He'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. We share that with people, not because it's a CBN idea, but because it's a God idea and because we want you to be blessed in your life. We share because it comes from the Word. That's just one of the things that CBN is committed to, bringing the Word of God to you. We're also committed to making a difference in the lives of people in need around the world, and we'd love for you to be a part of that. If you'd like to join the 700 Club today, it's a great time to do it. Our number's toll-free. It's 1-800-700-7000. 65 cents a day, $20 a month, makes you a 700 Club member. And when you call, if you do your... your um, giving, you're joining with Pledge Express, that's electronic monthly giving. It means that $20 a month, your bank does all the work for you. No 
envelopes, no stamps, nothing on your part. You can stop it when you want. But it saves administrative costs for us so we can put even more of your gift right into the lives of people who are truly in need. And our way of saying thank you for using Pledge Express when you call today is to send you a Power for Life teaching. We believe these will bless you because they are all about the Word of God. This will come to you every month, and we want to thank you in advance for what you're doing to make a difference in the lives of others. There's our number again. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just call and say, I want to join the 700 Club. Gordon? Well, up next, a freak <laughs> boating accident takes a young girl into raging water. The force of this water was so strong, there are no words to describe the feeling of her being ripped away from my arms. It was very much like I was already dead. Meet four living miracles right after this. Well, Kelly and Shaw Merritt took their two children out on a lake for what was supposed to be a fun afternoon of boat riding. Then suddenly, without warning, all four of them were fighting for their lives. When the call came from Doherty County 911 that particular day, uh, you know, I just knew that we would actually be doing a, a search and recovery instead of a search and rescue. The weather for the previous three days had been nothing but rain, so we just thought, oh, it's gorgeous outside, and we'll jump in our boat and uh, go down Lake Chihaw and see all of the beautiful nature that's here in our area. Kelly Merritt and her family were enjoying a spring afternoon on the lakeside of the Georgia Power Dam. They didn't realize that the open gates of the dam were creating a dangerous undertow. The water was very calm on top. Our boat was being pulled without us knowing that it was being pulled. The closer they got to the dam, the greater the undertow which now began sweeping the boat toward the concrete wall near the spillway. It was just sucking the boat uh, faster and faster. We had lost control of the boat. The motor did not seem to matter anymore. The boat just smashed into the concrete wall and just dragged down the side of it. I prayed to God and it was a horrifying feeling, like frozen panic. All of the sudden, my son decided to jump out of the boat, and he was swimming as hard as he could, but I watched him get sucked underneath the boat. And then I put my arms around my daughter who was sitting right in front of me. As the boat was sucked through the wall, the water forced her daughter, Mize, from her arms. There are no words to describe the feeling of her being ripped away from my arms. It was very much like I was already dead. Kelly was sure she would never see her family again. The force of this water was so strong, I felt concrete and slime, and I dropped for what felt like an eternity. I reached up and I could feel the carpet on the bottom of the boat, and then behind me I could feel the concrete I was pinned there, and it was a horrifying feeling. Kelly began to accept the fact that she may die. I was having a conversation with God at that point, and I was telling him, um, in essence, thank you for all that I had had. I, I knew in my heart that I wanted more, but I didn't want more if, if my children weren't going to be with me, if my husband wasn't going to be with me. I said, Jesus, I need you to walk on water right now. I felt it literally like, like I don't need an ambulance, I don't need a helicopter, I don't need a life flight, I need a miracle worker, I need Jesus. Just as Kelly could hold her breath no longer, the boat rolled over, freeing her. I then was pulled towards the surface. Kelly began swimming against the swift current, trying to get to shore. Then I saw my son's head. And um, just a second or more after I saw the back of my husband's head, it was life, it was hope. Whenever I went over, I didn't know where the rest of my family was. And then I had like my dad grab a hold of the back of me. And at that point, I felt like almost like it gave me a hope to keep trying to swim and keep trying to get up. But there was still no sign of Mazay. 
I was just screaming, where is my daughter? Basically, my husband and my son started running down the bank of the river. They were hollering back, she's not here. I just laid in the sand on the side of the river, and I was just screaming, I need my child. I thought at that moment that we'd lost her, and then I heard someone yell, you know, we found her. We have her. Once torn from her mother, Ms. A had dropped down the wall also and found herself alone in the river on the other side. Suddenly, a, a man walked up to where I was laying on the ground, and he said, ma'am, I think we have your daughter. And he had on a green T-shirt. It said John 316. I started um, following him. All of a sudden, she was just there in the path. I couldn't see even a scratch on her. Indescribable. It is. It's indescribable. At that moment, that's when I realized that, that we had experienced a miracle, and, and we made it. We survived. I felt like another person was holding on to me, but there was no one around me when I came up. And I, I knew that it had to be God because there was no one else around. You know, it was nothing short of, of God's mercy in them, and four miracles performed that day for this entire family. The Merritt family drove home with no serious injuries. And while they never saw the man in the John 3.16 t-shirt again, they are grateful for his part in God's protection that day. I almost felt like he was an angel, but he had the biggest, prettiest smile. And that smile just, you know, came with a sense of peace. You wouldn't have thought that he would have, uh, you know, been the one to give you reassurance that everything's okay, but he did. About a year later, we were sitting in church, um, and uh, our pastor led us to read Isaiah 43, 2, and it said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and the rivers will not overflow you. And in that moment, I knew that God had given our family a Bible verse that was just for us. It was ours. Jesus had truly been with us. He was truly walking on water for us in those moments. He was, he was with us. Right now, I believe that we are four living miracles. Four living miracles. There are moments in life where you say, Lord, I, I don't need a rescue helicopter. I don't need uh, emergency text to show up. I need a miracle worker. I need to be able to walk on water right now. I need the Jesus that can do anything, who can literally change uh, molecules and perform outstanding miracles. If you need that right now, realize that in Him we live and move and have our being. He's not way off in heaven. He is right there with you. And His promise over you that He will never leave you he will never forsake you. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that means all you have to do is reach up and grab it. It's within your reach. It's right there at hand. And he is your very present help in time of need. Now, Terry and I are going to pray. I want you to pray with us if you have a need. If you need a miracle worker in your life, uh, today is the day because Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. What he's done for others, he will do for you. But before we pray, we want to encourage you with some miracles that have happened to other people. Here's M Reginald from Jacksonville, Florida. He was diagnosed with leukemia. Doctor said there was no hope. Reginald needed a miracle. He needed a miracle worker. Doctors were out of solutions. For two months, he kept calling the prayer center for healing prayers. I love that. The prayer, prevailing prayer, the prayer that gets an answer, the importune widow that keeps knocking at the door. That's how you get answers to prayer. You, you know the answer is there. All you got to do is keep knocking. Knock and it will be opened unto you. Seek and you will find. He kept calling for healing prayers. He went back to the doctor. The doctor stated he is now cancer free. Same doctor said that there was no hope is now saying you're cancer free. 
There's hope. Amazing. There is a miracle worker. What do you have? Here's Judy from Sandusky, Ohio. She had a lump on her left breast, was very concerned that the cancer she'd had before had come back. You could imagine her fear. The lump had a shooting pain at times. Her doctor could feel it as well. She believed in the prayer of agreement, so she called the prayer center also to agree with someone for her healing. After prayer, the lump started diminishing. In three weeks, it was totally gone. She had a mammogram. The lump wow. is no longer Praise there. God. Join with us. If you have a need, lay your hand on that area of the body that needs healing and we'll agree with you. If you don't have a need, well then just pray for others. Let's create a great circle of prayer and realize that when two or more agree touching anything, it shall be done for them. So let's pray. Mm -hmm. Lord, we lift the needs of the audience to you right now. And as people are laying hands on that area of the body that needs healing, we join with them and we join in agreement, touching it right now. And we say to it, be healed and be made whole in the name of Jesus. Release now, release healing now in Jesus name. There's someone you've got uh, pinched nerves in, the right, uh, in your neck and it's affecting the right side uh, where you have shooting pains on the top of your shoulder and the back uh, of your neck and God's just released all of that and you're healed now. Someone else with problems with the eustachian tube in your right ear, a blockage that's uh, affected your hearing, it's affected everything, balance, everything. God's just cleansing all of that out. He's opening up now in mm -hmm. Jesus name. Be healed, be made whole. Terry? Someone else, you're struggling with jaundice because of another issue, and, but you just can't seem to get rid of it, to get a leg up on that thing. The jaundice is going to disappear and the condition that caused it as well. Just lift up your hands and receive that healing from the Lord today. Someone with tremendous pain in your right shoulder and it's painful to move it. Uh, it's been called a frozen shoulder. And so in Jesus' name, unfreeze, mm -hmm. loose now in the name of Jesus and be made whole. Yeah, someone else, your Achilles tendon, very, uh, you've had a, a problem with it before and it's just weakened by everything that's happened. God's strengthening that for you now. You'll not have a problem again. Uh, someone with problems in your left thigh and it's uh, related to a staph infection that's gone down to the bone mm -hmm. and God's healing. He's able to take that infection out in Jesus name just be restored, be made whole, let everything come together, let there be no scar, mm -hmm. let there be just normal healing and normal leg, normal tissue, normal function in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. be made whole. And someone else, you're just struggling with really, really deep-seated grief. You've lost someone very dear to you. You want joy to come again, but you just can't seem to get there from here. Lift up your hands and let the joy of the Lord today become your strength. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've been healed, we want to share in your good report. So give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. We leave you these words from Job 9. He does great things past finding out. Yes, wonders without number. For all of us here, God bless you. We'll see you again.